Okay, hello students. Uh, this is Professor Vicente Saya. Welcome to my class. This is uh, part two of chapter 10 presentation. Uh, chapter 10, auditing the revenue process. Uh, we talked about the overview of revenue in part one. In part two, we are going to talk about the flow chart of the uh, revenue process and uh, other issues. Now, like I said in part one, um, auditors would sometimes write their understanding of the revenue process of a company uh, by narratively. Alternatively, a flow chart of the revenue process is mapped out as part of their understanding. So if you take a look at this flow chart of the revenue process, it looks very comprehensive and very overwhelming. But in actuality, if you look at it very closely, it is not that bad. Now, let's take a look at, uh, of course, we already talked about the symbols of flowcharts in previous chapters. So let's take a look at uh, this uh, flowchart. Now, we are going to read the flowchart from left to right, uh, top to bottom. So, it, as you can see, the first column is the order entry department. So that is the order, the order entry department is the first department that is responsible for the first function of the revenue process. So the initial function uh, in any typical uh, uh, company or in the revenue process is the is is for the uh, some personnel to receive sales order from buyers either by mail or by fax. So the buyers will send us their sales order authorizing us or uh, 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 to sell X amount of quantity of goods to them. So the customer orders are received. By the time we receive the customer's order, let's take a look at what happened. The personnel of the company, uh, I know this is not very visible. Uh, you can actually, you have the benefit of your PowerPoint to look at this uh, more closely. So the personnel enters sales order uh, from uh, the information that they receive. So that is what is happening here. Customer sales orders have been entered. Now the orders are from phone or there are some orders that are sent in either by phone or through the internet. And the information of those orders automatically goes into the system and it is being sent to the IT department for data validation or for, for processing. Whereas the sales order that we receive by fax or by mail has to be manually entered by an employee for processing. So if there is an error during the process of entering the potential uh, buyer's sales order information, we make the necessary correction and send it to the IT department for processing. So when the information gets to the IT department, which is the second column, take a look at what is happening here. Already in the system, in the system or in the computer, the company already has the customer's uh, basic information, like the price of the product, the name of the customer, uh, the address, the type of inventory that the customer is placing an order for, so on and so forth. Now, of course, Still, in the IT department, you have some open orders. Those are the orders that we have not filled. Those are the orders that we have not satisfied. So those orders are open. And the IT department takes, uh, 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 take into account the default information that we set for this customer and process the order that just comes in. If there is an error, an error report is being produced and it is being fixed. So, so take a look at what happened. After the orders have been processed, and they have been processed in batch, meaning you process like 20 or 30 at the same time, instead of processing uh, each order individually. So at night, or at the end of the day, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, p.m., however the case might be, the IT department or the system process the order in batch. And when that happens, take a look at what happened here. The inventory that the customer is placing an order for is also taken into consideration. Then, ultimately, the information is being sent 
to the shipping department. So as you can see, the top column is the shipping department. So the shipping department takes over at that point. Now, of course, the shipping department should receive an approved shipping report before the shipment is being done. So here we have the goods are being shipped after the uh, 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 shipment has been approved and uh, the information, the shipment is being sent to the customer and the related paperwork is also being uh, taken care of. So after the shipping department uh, is done with their function, take a look at what happened. We send the necessary information to the billing department because the billing department has to take care of business in terms of making sure that the goods that are shipped are being billed. So, so let's take a look at what happens here. Here is the input. Input meaning what? The relevant information from uh, the previous department. So here, the shipping transactions, meaning how many items were shipped to the customer, the price, every other information is right here in the system. And then you have the open order, the inventory that was shipped. So the billing department system takes over um, and the billing program uh, of the big software takes over and process the information. So the end result of the billing department function is the generation of sales invoice. As you know, sales invoice is more or less like a bill uh, that is sent to customer for payment. So the sales invoices are generated and they are being sent to customers uh, accordingly. Now, after the billing department has performed its function, take a look at what has happened. The IT department comes into play again. Why? Because the IT department has to take the shipping transactions again, uh, the quantity that was shipped, the price, and other pertinent information. And the IT department has to update the accounts receivable. Those are our accounting records. Uh, then, of course, the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, individual customers' account has to be updated in terms of what they owe us. So the IT department takes all this information into, uh, uh, into consideration. The shipping transaction accounts receivable, the remittance transactions, and then you have the accounts receivable being updated. So accounts receivable is being updated either weekly or monthly. Now, uh, take a look at uh, on the right side of the IT department. Again, the accounts receivable remittance are by shipping transaction. The general ledger is also being updated. So at the end of the day, after the accounts receivable uh, report has been done, then on a weekly or monthly basis, we send statements to customers. What is the difference between statement and invoice? Invoice, we send to customer for a particular transaction. But the statement consists of the current invoice and the previous transactions or the previous outstanding receivables of the customer. You know, for some of you, you receive uh, uh, a bill from credit card company. Uh, so uh, it will consist of the current transactions and what you owe in the past. So that would be considered as a statement, just like the statement that you receive uh, from a, a credit card company. So that is that statement is being sent to the customer either on a weekly or monthly basis, however the case might be. So now, at the end of processing all that information, what happens? We wind up with a lot of different reports that we can use for different purposes. Take a look at some of them on the right margin. You, now you can generate the sales journal from the system. You can generate the cash receipt journal, the age trial balance, uh, the remittance summary, journal entry summary, so on and so forth. Now, lastly, take a look at what happened. By the time we process the sales order, we have them uh, process, we ship them, we build them, the IT department process them. Hopefully and prayerfully, we should be expecting payment from the customer. So when the customers pay us, then the cash receipt department takes over. Now the cash receipt department will process the payment. Now, Usually the payment will come directly from the customer or sometimes we make a special arrangement whereby the customer sends the payment to the bank and then the bank would eventually notify us 
of the customer's uh, payment. So here on this diagram, we, we assume that some of the funds are received from the bank and with the remittance advice listing. What is remittance advice? Remember when you receive your credit card bill, when you receive your credit card bill, the, the, the part that you tear and send to the credit card company along with your payment, that is the remittance advice. So we target the remittance advice and then uh, we reconcile by cash receipt, uh, 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 by the, class, the cash receipt claim. So the person that is responsible uh, for the reconciliation will now reconcile what we receive uh, with the remittance advice. Then lastly, the IT department comes into play again. Why is the IT department coming into play multiple times? Because the IT department is responsible for actually processing all these related transactions in order for us to have our records updated and in order for us to have different reports uh, generated. So the IT department comes into play again. The information that they receive from the bank, the remittance advice transaction, the accounts receivable update, uh, the remittance advice transactions, all of that are being updated. If there is an error, the error is being uh, taken care of and uh, and uh, that is the end of the uh, process. So again, this is not too much of a big deal, but uh, most flow chart are very, some flow charts like this are very comprehensive and it shouldn't be frightening at all. If you follow it step by step, uh, department by department, uh, you should be okay in terms of the understanding. So, let's take a look at types of documents and records. Question is, what is a document and what is a record? Now we say that the docu another name for document is source document or business record, all right? Now, the document relates to the records. And the question is, what are records? When we talk about records here, we are talking about accounting records like the journal, the ledger, the subsidiary ledger, the special journal like sales journal, purchases journal, those are the actual records that we record our transaction in. So what is the relationship between documents and records? We use the document as the basis for recording transaction in the record. So the documents are evidence of the transaction. So that would be the conclusion of a part two of chapter 10 presentation.